The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're at. Thanks a lot for joining us today. We've got a pretty interesting topic that uh, we're going to cover this morning, and that's the concept of human social media. It's something that we've been working on quite a bit this year as we roll out uh, different initiatives. And one of the themes that we have this year is sort of getting real on all things social. And what by getting real, we mean just you know, doing, uh, you know, doing the things that brands really should be doing with social and uh, you know, not just following best practices uh, or what are considered best practices and things like that. So basically today is sharing some of the, the learnings so far. And those of you that have attended previous webinars know a couple of things about what we typically do. Uh, one is, of course, we're recording this. So if there's something in here that's compelling and you want to share with your friends or coworkers afterward, you'll find it at the links on the screen. And we have taken a few questions and tried to weave those in from the registrants. Uh, and finally, we try to make these all information and no, uh, you know, no sales pitch, no fluff. Uh, you know, just kind of here's what we're learning, here's what's going on, here's what we know about human social to date. Um, we might uh, even get done a little early today. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how things go. Uh, but this is uh, this is a concept that uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about it. In fact, there's a book that's out there called Humanize, which was written about this this very concept. Uh, you know, of how do you really evolve a brand to be human in social media. You know, we've, we've seen that concept since the dawn of social and that it's really here to help humanize brands. But are we really, really doing that with our organizations? And you know, oftentimes the answer to that is no, and we'll talk about that as we go. A little bit about the state of where we're at. Uh, where are you guys at on the spectrum of, uh, you know, people and platforms? Uh, and then we'll talk about, you know, some of the things about what it means to be human. And this is really just kicking off the conversation. Uh, the next webinar that we're doing in March, uh, those of you that have seen that I know that we're going to cover the concept of marketing personas. And the reason I mentioned that at the outset here is that's one of the tools that we use to help humanize the social media relationships. Um, for those of you, before we go any further, that are on Twitter today and feel like watching and tweeting at the same time, by all means be my guest. The hashtag for today's event is human social, hashtag human social. So let's go. Let's talk about uh, what we mean by human social and kind of get uh, get on the road here so you guys get uh, get some understanding of where we're going with this and what we mean. Uh, first and foremost, I think some of us would probably agree with this, and, and maybe this is, uh, you know, this is our lives in social media right now for, uh, you know, for a good many of us. And that is, you know, we're, we're drowning in social media tactics. And... Uh, every event we do, uh, you know, we always get the question, well, what's next? How do we know what to do with what's next? You know, is Pinterest going to be big? Is Instagram going to be big? Should I be playing, paying attention and playing around with Google Plus? You know, what's next? And we're on this tools treadmill, if you will, and we just can't seem to get off that. But I would argue that if you look at some of the best brands doing social media, they're not really focused on the tools. They're really focused on the strategy. They're really focused on, you know, what we mean by humanizing the brand. And we'll talk about how they're doing some of that as we go here today. Uh, but they're, you know, they're moving away from this drowning in tactics and, and going up a level, in fact, going up a couple of levels. The challenge, and this is really kind of a fun conversation to have, you know, think about the concept of advanced social media. Okay, so by advanced social, what do we mean by that? Do we mean that you can actually do better social media? Can you write a better tweet? Can you craft a better blog post? Can you create a better Facebook post? You know, there's only so much we can do given the tools that we have. You know, so once we stop drowning in the tools, we realize that the best organizations that are doing social media really, really well aren't doing them in the context of doing social media better. They're doing them in the context of being a better organization, and we'll talk about that a lot today, about what it means to be a better organization in social media, what those organizations look like, how they're acting, and at the end of the day, our goal here is to make our organizations more human. Uh, so we'll have a few questions, some things for you guys to consider as we go uh, throughout today. 
human social is what we would call, or what we call today, evolved social media. Uh, you know, first and foremost, it goes beyond the random acts of social. Uh, there are still a lot of organizations that have the social media seizure every so often where they realize, oh, this would be a great thing to integrate into a campaign or, you know, we're doing a new, uh, you know, a new product launch and we should think about what we can do to socialize that or we've got an event coming up and I wonder what we can do with social media for that. And, and while those are all great conversations to have, those are conversations that we should have been having all along. And it's really about how do we leverage our people to create relationships and real connections with the marketplace and how do we really tap into everything that we need, uh, which is, you know, connections and relationships and, and you know, sharing and opportunities to create uh, and also offer those same opportunities and leverage those same, uh, you know, social constructs with our audience and, and not just go out with marketing speak. In fact, if you were to evaluate, and this is kind of a fun exercise and we like to do it, uh, you know, anytime we, we start working on a social project, we look at the competitive set in any industry and we benchmark, you know, what are they doing? What's the client doing? What's their top competitor doing? What's everyone else in the industry doing? What's, you know, a company that's maybe, you know, further away, you know, in another state or in another country doing? And we look to see just how similar they are. And I, if any of you have done this, you may have found the same thing. Oftentimes, it's very similar. You know, there's not a lot of real innovation going on here. There's not a lot of evolution. And, and that's what we're going for is, you know, evolving what we're doing in, in social. Uh, and we ask the question, are you really moving forward? And I want to stop here for, for a little bit because this is critical. Are you embedding the principles and values of social media? First question, what do we mean by principles and values of social media? Remember back to when we first started talking about social and, you know, whatever it was for you, if it was way back in 2003 or even it's just a couple years ago, you know, 2009, 2010, um, or maybe it's just something this year. You know, we talked about things like authenticity and transparency and engagement and listening and all of that stuff. Are you really practicing all of that? Have we embedded those things? Have we embedded authenticity? Have we embedded transparency? Have we embedded the value of connectedness into our organization? And are you making these part of your culture, encouraging your employees, encouraging your team, encouraging your vendors, distributors, everyone who surrounds you? And are you modeling the necessary behaviors? You know, are you behaving in the way that would make you a more social brand or are you just doing the tactics and tools because it's a best practice and everyone else is doing it? One of the things that comes back when we ask those questions is the answer is really no. Uh, not no unequivocally, but no in, con in certain conditions and no more often than it is yes. What's required to really move forward to be a human social brand? Uh, one, we have to have engaged and aware leadership. Leadership of the department, leadership of the program, leadership of the organization. And you look at organizations that, you know, you pick on a Whole Foods, you pick on a Starbucks, and you pick on some of the larger ones, even some of the smaller ones, like a River Pools on the East Coast, and they're a pool installer. They've been written about quite a bit. And, you know, they see themselves in the information and education business, and they deliver that through social media, even though what they do is install pools. They have totally engaged and completely aware leadership of just how valuable social media is and just what it means to be a human brand. Social leaders and organizational leaders who actually value connecting. And we all talk about the value of word of mouth, we talk about the value of networking, but how do you put ROI to that? And when we start asking tough questions like that about how do you value that, you know, what what do you really do with that information? What you know, what value is it of you or for you as an organization to connect with customers and social media? Uh, those are all things that leadership has to truly value and has to be able to place a value on. And then finally, does the leadership actually value the accessibility and approachability of the organization? Uh, we're talking about this uh, recently with an organization who didn't necessarily see the value. Um, it's an out-of-state organization, so it's none of you guys in Wisconsin. Um, it's an, it's a, didn't see the value in connecting with their constituents beyond nine to five. Even though, oddly enough, they're a brand 
that deals with discretionary income and when you spend discretionary income you're typically not spending it from nine to five you're shopping at night you're engaging in the evening engaging on the weekends and there's a huge disconnect because if we really want to be a human social brand and really be engaged we need to be accessible and approachable you know when our constituents are accessible and approachable what else do we mean by human social it means to stop copying how many of us have looked for and even used this in our social programs or even used it to convince leadership that we need to do something by looking at something that someone else is doing, maybe in the industry, maybe outside the industry, and said, well, look, they're doing this. That means we can do it too. I look at this and say the road to mediocrity is paved with best practices or best practices are the quickest path to mediocrity especially in social media. The Dilbert cartoon kind of sums it up uh, because if everyone else is doing it and now you're doing it, well, what does that make you? Does it make us a breakthrough human brand? Does it make us, a, you know, an also ran? Uh, and I think it, you know, makes us an also ran. You know, the, uh, the value of experimentation, the value of innovation is often lost on social because it's hidden under or crushed under, you know, the layer of, one, this is experimental to begin with. Two, we need to prove ROI. Three, it was tough enough to get our organization to believe that this is something we need to do. And four, we're just scared of keeping our jobs in this whole social media era. And so we're really not going to rock the boat when in reality that's exactly what's required in order to actually be a human brand and, and truly evolve. There's an interesting uh, report that came out a couple of weeks ago about Starbucks and the buzziest, if you will, the brands with the most buzz out of 2012, and they were one of them. And one of the things that's interesting, and one to stop on this, and again, none of us could be Starbucks by any stretch of anyone's imagination, uh, but there's a lot to learn from the philosophy here, and they embody all these things we're talking about, about leadership valuing connection, leadership valuing humanness, leadership valuing you know, social media in and of itself. And they find their answers to what's best and what's next and how to grow and how to gain through small innovations, a little bit of experimentation, and and really what that amounts to then is learning. They learn what works, they learn what doesn't, and they learn faster and further, and they're further ahead than their competition because they're willing to learn. We see this in other companies as well, in manufacturing, in finance, in retail, where they're really igniting their social growth, they're really igniting the growth of the organization because they're willing to innovate and experiment and turn that into learning for the organization, not just for one social media person in the department, but for the entire company. Uh, and they're not just imitating what everyone else is doing. The other thing that brands have done, uh, the social brands have done, is they've moved on to what they call, or what we call, their higher holy calling, if you will, high concept, reason to believe. Uh, if any of you have read Simon Sinek's book on Start With Why, you know, it's the concept of what's the why behind the brand. Uh, and at the end of the day, this is one of the, the biggest challenges that we see, and it's translating the why of the organization, you know, the who we are, the why do we exist, into social media relationships. Uh, we see it as no other real good way to maintain your competitive edge, you know, as we, as we move along and we see, you know, things change. Uh, we were part of a presentation this week by a local broadcasting company, and they were talking about the value of radio advertising, which, you know, is fascinating um, because it, it is still very valuable media, as are all other media. And, uh, you know, they were bashing social a little bit, not too bad. Uh, you know, but what's interesting is, when you look at ads, when you look at all the other ways of going to market um, with your message, social is one of the few media, if not the only media, that allows us, say for direct, you know, person-to-person -person sales, that allows us to really connect person-to-person -person and make those unbreakable relationships that we have with the market or that we want with the market. Uh, yet, when you look at how so many brands do this, they're taking the radio, the TV, the newspaper, the print, paradigm and taking marketing material, pushing it into social, and not really using the tools and the channels for genuine relationship development, which is, you know, which is really what's required. Uh, 
So let's talk a little bit about what it means to get human. Uh, I think you guys understand a little bit about where we've come from, a little bit about what we see brands doing, uh, you know, some of the good, some of the bad. But what does this really mean? Why be human in the first place? You know, why are we even working on this, you know, manifesto type concept throughout this year? And, you know, what, what does it really mean? To us, it means connecting in real time with real people. And that means actually having someone who manages social media on a daily basis within the organization. There's an interesting report that came out in at the credit union industry this past year. And it benchmarked a couple hundred credit unions. And you could parlay this into any other industry, but it was fascinating um, because it was just focused on credit unions specifically. And they said that those credit unions that spend between two and eight hours a week in social media are basically treading water, if not just falling behind, wasting their time. Those that spend more than eight hours a week are likely to see modest success. And what they really focused on was those that actually have one, at least one FTE, one full-time equivalent, one person, a community manager, a face of the brand, someone who's actually managing, engaging in the social presence. If you look at it from the perspective of, say, hiring a salesperson, you know, it's that one person who's developing business, the one person who's relating with customers, who's on the front lines, except this person's on the front lines of social. Those organizations are the ones that saw the outsized success. They saw the big wins, the huge breakthroughs, the great results, the amazing social engagement that you know they were expecting and they were told to expect because they put the people front and center to be there real time with real people with a reality of what's going on with the brand connected to the audience. The other thing that they saw and that we see as well is that human social, while we want it to be this, you know, face of the brand front and center in social media, that's table stakes now. What's next, though, is actually monitoring what's happening. How many of you on the call in the past month or so have gone to Facebook and downloaded all of the Facebook insights and really gone through them to determine what type of content moves the needle, what type of content is eh, what type of content gets the most comments, what type of content, you get the point. And then I've taken some of that data and looked at your Google Analytics or Omniture or whatever it is that you're tracking to see, you know, what's driving traffic, you know, what's actually sending people to the site, what happens when they get there an organization locally that hadn't done this in quite a while. And they looked at some real in-depth analysis, and they found out that, lo and behold, Pinterest was the top driver of traffic to the site. And, you know, that was really insight number one. And now insight number two is to dig deeper and figure out, well, what happens when people come from, you know, Pinterest to the website? What happens when we're using these social tools and they know they can reach a real person through Facebook, or they know they can reach a real person through Twitter, et cetera. You know, what does that mean to the brand? Uh, the third point here in, in, in why human is, is such an important factor, and we'll talk more about this, too, in another, uh, uh, another couple of minutes of, when we talk about the uh, sort of evolution of segmentation for social, uh, is that word of mouth is a key factor in purchase decisions. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, we've seen from really 2005, six, seven on up until, you know, last year is every year the value of word of mouth and purchase decisions increases. You know, it's always been valuable, but with the explosion of social, we've never had a time in society when we've had so much access to so much information at any one time. And what we really have now is not a problem of information overload. It's a problem of filter and building filters and being able to filter. And one of the filters that we use increasingly is this trust of friends, is this trust of our network, is this trust of, you know, whatever it is. We look at the old advertising paradigm, and uh, you know, one of the things that was shared in the, uh, in the radio workshop this week was, you know, you really need to be known before you need to be needed. But I throw the question out to all of you. 
And that's really what we want, right? We want people to think of us. We want share of mind. You know, think of all the different purchases and decisions we make in our life. Think about all the things you keep in your head. And think about your behavior when you need something. Is your behavior to sit there quietly and think, hmm, I wonder who I know or I wonder what brand I know who might sell this particular thing to solve this particular problem. Sure, if it's something that's shorthand, maybe. But how many of you would rather do one of two other things? One, ask your network, hey, I know that I need a new bank, and I realize that I've heard ads from no less than 20 banks in the last two weeks, but I don't really know how to differentiate them. Let's see what my friends know. Or we go online to search, and we find reviews and other things and other, you know, or, you know, we actually go to the Facebook page and see, do they connect? You know, do they relate? You know, so on and so forth. Being known is wonderful, but being able to connect, uh, you know, with others who are constituents of the organization is, is even more critical and will become more critical as word of mouth becomes more important. So just a few reasons for, for humanness. The second way that brands are becoming more human is focusing on strategy. And you hear us talk about this all the time, and we do webinars on it. You know, we're always bullish on strategy, as are a lot of other organizations. Uh, but the reason that some organizations are reluctant, we have a workshop this uh, next week with B2B Social Media. And when we polled the 25 people in the workshop, we came back with a fraction. And I'm talking a single small digit fraction of people who actually have a written social media strategy. Why is that? You know, sometimes it's a lack of time, lack of commitment. But at the end of the day, every one of us needs to think about the strategy. We often get into, and the Seth Godin quote here is, is indicative of, of what happens. You know, we don't necessarily want to put out, you know, the big goal, the big steps, especially in such an untested media, as some of us think, like social. The lack of confidence is, is overwhelming. And what we really get to is like, well, what can we do? What can we do? What can we say that we've done? What can we sh do to, to show, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of heat, a little bit of, you know, fire, a little bit of something going on? Um, and we immediately go to tactics, which is, you know, the, the, the drowning in tactics, the, the tools and tactical treadmill that we're on, uh, because we think that if we do these things that other brands are doing, that it's going to get us to succeed, and then we get three months and six months and a year down the road, and we realize, well, you know, wow, this uh, this really wasn't all that exciting. Uh, you look at some of the great social failures, if you will, and uh, the radio guys were, were keen to point this out. Well, GM pulled all their money out of Facebook advertising. Um, never mind the fact that Ford is wildly successful with all of their social media endeavors. Uh, you know, is it a difference of strategy? Is it just a me too execution? Is it, you know, what is it there? Uh, but the best human brands actually do focus on strategy. They have a defined purpose that emanates from their why or their higher holy calling or whatever you want to call it that we alluded to before. This is one of the questions that came up and comes up all the time. So can I still be a human social media brand and automate my social media? Think about right now. How many of you have some social media automation going on? A lot of us do. Even we do. Uh, you know, we have something that goes from, you know, one network to another uh, because we want to use one network for amplification. You know, oftentimes we see that with Twitter. People want to use that just for amplification, which is fine, but just because we use it for ampli amplification doesn't mean that we're really being a great social media steward. doesn't mean that we're really building an audience there because we know from all the research, and this continues to hold true, that there is still often less than 30% overlap between your audiences in LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and your blog. You're often talking to distinctly different audiences, which makes an automation seem like a good idea, but it also kind of blows up the concept of automation, you know, in the same in the same light as well, because it means that if we're automating from one network to another, we're developing relationships in one, and we're not developing the community and the relationships in the other. You know, amplification and automation really is not communication, and it's certainly not, you know, social human engagement. Um, it also doesn't account for a lot of the daily realities of, you know, the ebb and flow of the business, the ebb and flow of the industry, you know, places for you to be relevant and take opportunities in each of the social channels to be relevant and engaging with your audience. It also doesn't really keep the 
concept of social media content half-life, which means, you know, every tweet, the half-life is about two to two and a half hours on average. And so we can tweet many times a day, but the average half-life of YouTube videos, LinkedIn posts, Facebook posts, blog posts, et cetera, is much greater, um, which means we can't do quite as much uh, of that content posting, um, you know, and still stay within the bounds of, of, of not annoying our audience. Um, the other challenge on daily realities is that, uh, you know, the irony of all this is that social media automation requires us to be that much more diligent about ensuring that the right messages go to the right place at the right time, which is ironically, again, really what we need to do when we manage social anyway. And this came into play, you know, tragically with Sandy Hook and tragically with other events around the world where organizations might have their social media on full automation. And you saw it, you know, in the, uh, in the slide, a couple slides ago with the AT&T uh, Twitter feed where every few minutes they were pushing something out. And, you know, there were a number of people, uh, our firm included, that called for, uh, you know, just a quick reminder of the, uh, the moratorium on automated social, you know, after national and or worldwide tragedies because it seems callous to be out there issuing all these great self-promotional messages and things, you know, whilst tragedy ensues around the world and, and it just doesn't look good for the brand or for anyone. Uh, you know, so the very thing we need to do to ensure that we're relevant and timely not stepping on toes, being relevant. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to save time, but it's, it's not really helping most of the organizations that are doing automation. The other thing that, that humanness, uh, you know, that creeps into the humanness discussion is recognizing that the audience is not flat. And this uh, kind of play on the, the Friedman book about the, uh, the world is flat and you know, how anything can be done in India or the U.S. and so on and so forth. But one of the other things that the most human of social brands have learned is that demographics don't really tell the story of the social audience. And when we think about how to communicate with that audience, we really need to go beyond, you know, the two-dimensional 25 to 34 year old female or, you know, the 18 to 24 year old male that, you know, has income and is going to college and is interested in sports and is going out and so on and so forth. Think about the real conversations we have. We like to have real conversations with real tangible, uh, you know, concepts with like-minded people, i.e., we like to talk through social media with our tribe that we've attracted, you know, with our audience, with, uh, you know, with the folks that we're engaging. One way to do this, and, and one of the things that, you know, this segues into next month's discussion, is this concept of, you know, personas and, and going beyond flat demographics you know, into sociographics, psychographics, technographics, all the other things that really give us an understanding of how our audience engages online, what they're doing in social media, how we can engage with them in social media, how do we write for them, what do we say to them, you know, and, and we create simple things that help us do that and help our copywriters and help our content creators and help our marketing team and, and really not just the marketing team, but if we're talking about deputizing the organization for social, which we'll get to, uh, the the entire organization needs to understand the personas that we serve and, and how we serve them and you know, what their unique uh, idiosyncrasies are. Uh, you know, it can be simple as a, a small narrative. And again, in next month's discussion, we'll, we'll go through the process of personas from A to Z and, and plenty of examples and you know, action steps and things like that. Uh, you know, it includes some fictional or quasi-fictional details uh, that give you a glimpse into who the real person is here. It outlines a bit about how they engage in their day, and more specifically, what sort of points your brand and your social media can look at to intersect with their daily lives. So for example, a lot of school districts use social media and they use it with a very keen sense of timing before school, after school, noon hours in terms of posting messages because they understand the life of the parent, they understand the life of the family, and they want to make sure that their message intersects with times where there's going to be, you know, the uh, likelihood for social engagement. You look at uh, local coffee shops, Altera down in Milwaukee is great for this. Their first Facebook messages start going out um, just after five in the morning. Why? Because they know that, uh, you know, and this is some fascinating research, that over 90% of millennials sleep with their device. Uh, and I don't mean that they cuddle with it, you know, it's on the nightstand, but um, the, uh, the other 
statistic that's relevant to back that up is that over 60% of millennials, the first thing they do in the morning is check their phone for messages overnight. And thirdly, one of the most uh, widely used first thing in the morning apps is Facebook. And so knowing your audience, knowing where they're at, knowing how we intersect with their lives is part of the persona as well. You don't get that kind of data from flat demographics. Uh, name, age, photo, a little bit of context to sort of put a face on this uh, individual. And then, you know, what are they looking for out of, uh, out of life? What are they looking for out of our social media interaction? So we take that persona, and this is a little bit of, I realize this might be marketing 101 for a second, but, but follow through here, if you, if you will, because this is something that, uh, that's absolutely essential to making human social work for our organizations. The old model of segmentation was, you know, we look at a target market and then we divide it into people who have common needs. So if I'm selling insurance, it might be, well, I have, the, you know, my local market and I want to target those people who uh, are looking for homeowners insurance and auto insurance and maybe they like recreation, so boats, snowmobile or ATV insurance and I'm going to segment out by people who kind of want the package. That's wonderful. In social media, we need to take it further. And when we talk about network markets, which all of our markets are now, you know, with 100 and some odd uh, million people, uh, yeah, Facebook has a billion, but there's only 176 to 180 million here um, in the U.S., but that's not small potatoes. That's half the U.S. population, so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but the segments need to have a common interest but also have access to one another. And this is critical. And they also need to see one another as a trusted reference. Remember a few slides ago we talked about the power of word of mouth. We know that Facebook is the second most trafficked word of mouth vehicle on the planet today after person-to-person -person word of mouth. So you or I, you know, talking to one another about product, service, provider, etc. When we think about the power of social and the power of engaging, we want to build an audience who has access to one another and thusly, you know, we can all sort of befriend that audience. If you remember way back in the day when MySpace was around, it was I think Tom who is like the MySpace guy who showed up as a friend to everyone in MySpace. You know, think about how that works for your brand. You know, should the social media face of the brand or one of the social faces of the brand be recognizable to every connected member of your tribe or community or customer base? The short answer is yes. You know, so we think about the segments of customers we're going after in social media. We think about how are they not just alike in common interest, but how are they connected and how can we connect them and how can we leverage, you know, information, uh, whether it's PR, testimonials, things like that, uh, that can showcase the, the trustworthiness of reference, you know, between these connected folks who have a common interest. Um, so think about the access to one another. When you're rolling out a new product, a new service, or you're thinking about this concept of human social, what does it mean to, to really have that, you know, that access uh, to the market? Uh, access to one another, sorry. Couple other things uh, as we uh, as we wind uh, you know wind up here. Social segmentation, of course, matters. But what also matters is the organization actually decentralizing social, and this is probably one of the biggest you know scary items in social media. And the reason it's so scary is that it means we actually educate and empower our team members to do the right thing in social media. Decentralizing the culture meaning that it's not just command and control, it's not just one person. It's really taking social and making the entire organization a social business. This is a lofty goal to be sure for any organization. And even the best organizations that are doing social well haven't fully decentralized. But to be a truly human brand, you think about it, you trust, if you're a bank, you trust the tellers with that hand-to-hand -hand relationship every day that delivers on the brand promise. If you have salespeople, we entrust them. If we have customer service people, we entrust them with the most intimate of relations over the phone, in the branch, you know, in the office, in terms of, you know, conducting business. 
you know, we entrust to individuals, yet so many organizations are reluctant to give that same level of trust and authority and capability when it, when it comes to social media, you know, the most engaging digital opportunity there is today. Uh, one of the things that some organizations are doing to, to make this more palatable, IBM is one of them. They have a fascinating program with their salespeople. This is a B2B organization, obviously. Um, but what they do is marketing has deputized the entire sales force to go out and be social in whatever way they see fit, within reason. Um, you know, if you're going to go out on Twitter and you're not going to really keep up on it, you know, they don't want to put a black eye on the organization. They want you to be engaged and involved. What they do is they provide, provide what we call sales ready social messaging that gives them the opportunity to adapt that messaging to their customer base to their location etc and feeds them content that they can use uh, as you know value added content for the audience and for the tribe that they serve and they've truly embraced this idea of decentralizing the culture and instilling ownership of those social media conversations at the local level and i realize it isn't practical for everyone but you know on the order or on the spectrum of, you know, we're a total platform and tools driven brand to, you know, we really believe in bringing human uh, factors to social media and really believe in, you know, doing the right things right. Uh, the two things here, decentralizing and instilling ownership, are absolutely critical to success. The, uh, the next thing that's critical, uh, and again, as we're kind of winding up here, is this concept of creating what we call human content and by human content we mean going beyond marketing speak and you've heard people talk about content um, some of you maybe have even given webinars on content or you're doing the whole content marketing thing I get that that's great the dialogue that we create and one of the things that we've seen uh, recently on social is that it really is designed to be a directed dialogue directed in that the marketing organization is directing the conversation toward a logical end, a purchase, a relationship, a referral, word of mouth mention, something that obviously helps them move forward. And, you know, no doubt that we want to do that, right? I mean, we're not being social for the sake of social. We're being social for the sake of growing the business. But this dialogue is based on valuable content. You know, and we always ask a couple, we ask a lot of questions. We ask a couple key questions. Will my audience find this useful? this meaning photo and by useful there are many uses it could be funny could be entertaining could be informational could make them look really good if they shared it with a friend um, it could be something that you know tugs at any one of the major emotions uh, and we'll talk a bit more about this next month when we get to personas and what type of content and you know different personas like to see hear and read We'll also talk about the types of content that the brand persona, which this is something that's a little bit, a um, little bit outside the realm of what we normally see um, done in persona development. But we want to match some of the personas of the brands. There's a, an old book called The Hero and the Outlaw that talks about the different brand personas. We'll bring some of that into the conversation. Um, you know, for example, whether you're a Joker brand. Uh, you know, like Axe or you're a Sage brand like a McKinsey or even we consider ourselves more of a, you know, informational, educational, Sage, uh, mentor type brand. Uh, the type of content that you would share, the type of tribe you would develop are going to be different. Uh, the second question is, are you actually helping them solve a problem? And again, that problem could be, hey, I'm bored, I need something funny from a brand that I trust or I need something inspirational or I need something informational to solve a, uh, a particular problem that I have. Creating authentic relationships, and we're going to pick on Aiden and Ki as an instance here. Um, and you're like, well, why the picture with Aiden and the and the girl from Metropolis? One of the things that's happened with some of the best social human brands or human social brands, sorry, is these real authentic relationships that they've developed. And you see this manifest every day on Twitter, where people are commenting back and forth, and they know each other. When they get into meet space or meet in real time at an event, in this case a trade show uh, as depicted here, they feel like they know one another. You know, it creates a stronger bond between, in this case, media, which is an absolutely wonderful relationship, um, or in other cases, customer uh, and brand. And this is a case where you've got an absolutely, you know, stellar face to the brand, day in, day out, 
advocate of the brand, you know, human face, human interaction, um, really embodies that concept of, of humanness. And we have this genuine, this authentic back and forth interaction between the social human and the audience, which is really what we want. But, you know, really think about and, you know, look at your organizations. Do you have that yet? Do you have a person who could do that? Do we not have that person? Do we not have that team? You know, that's really what we're talking about developing. A uh, couple other things here as we uh, uh, last, uh, last major idea before we wrap this up. Uh, and again, this is really the kickoff of you know, a year's worth of discussion um, where the central theme is anything we're talking about within reason uh, you know, is really this, this human aspect. You won't see a lot of discussion about using Hootsuite to automate tweets and, and things like that uh, you know, over the next year. The, uh, the idea of blogging as yourself is a common question we see all the time. Should I be tweeting as myself, blogging as myself, you know, or should I just leave the face of the brand out there? You know, at the end of the day, people like to connect with people. I think you guys get the point. I think you've seen that over the last 40 minutes or so that we're you know, talking about this idea of really connecting people to people. And they want to connect with smart, engaging you know, humans. Witty brands are great. You know, there, are, there are some fun brands to be sure. So, you know, that's not to say that we can't do that. Um, you know, but when we get down to the level of human social media, you know, think about this years ago when this is in the 90s, Northwestern University and a number of other organizations, e-commerce was just becoming a big thing. And again, I'm talking 96, 97, you know, we talked about the, the sort of faceless interaction. Can it replace the salesperson? And there were, there were people that predicted salespeople will be gone in a decade. We won't need salespeople at all because we have e-commerce and who wouldn't just want to go to a website? Why would you want to talk to someone? God forbid they come in your office or cold call you and annoy you, really. Uh, you know, where are we at today with salespeople? They're as popular as ever. They're as evident in the marketplace as ever. And they've all still got jobs, you know, years forward, 15 years forward from, from that discussion. Why? because we're human beings and people want to connect with others. So when we think about, and this blog as yourself is a metaphor for really everything else, you know, think about very carefully what do we do as the brand and what do we do as an individual. So let's wrap this up. Human social in a nutshell. Human social is evolved social. It goes beyond random acts of social. It's about people, relationships, real connections. I think you guys get the point. It goes beyond flat demographics and helps us to develop or encourages us to develop real personas, real human archetypes that we can envision having real conversations with. It also means social media small talk. And this doesn't mean that we need to post cat videos all the time. I know that's kind of the, you know, metaphorical social media waste of time concept. Um, but we're bullish on, and I know that some of you who've attended other events and webinars have, have probably now gone out and purchased this and, and slogged through it, the Chase's calendar of events and maybe other tools online that are similar. Uh, the idea of how do we weave our social conversations into the daily happenings, daily events, um, major things in our industry, major causes, things like that. Um, it's human to human. You know, it's putting a human face. It's like Aiden at KI being a human face to the brand, being a real person. You know, it's like Best Buy with their 12th force being out there, having real people on Twitter who are real blue shirts in the store, actually helping customers in their online and their offline as well. And, and the last thing, and, and, and we don't generally like to, to bash other media or, or bash concepts here, um, you know, we all use social media software. All of us on the call do. We do. Uh, we use a lot of different tools. That's great. We're on the tool, the tool treadmill as much as anyone else. Uh, but the software doesn't make you social. Just because you're on Facebook doesn't meet, make you social. Pinterest does not make you social. You as the brand, you know, make you social. So what's next for us? This is a challenge, if you will, to organizations out there who you know, again, just kind of wet our whistles today with what do we mean by human social? Where is it going? What are a couple of things we can do? Um, but these are the things that we see. And oddly enough, these are the things that are out of the uh, the 1980s book uh, about challenge and change. Uh, the five fundamentals of what you see in exemplary leaders taking people through changing times. 
one, they're challenging the process. They're challenging what other organizations are doing. They're challenging the best practices. They're challenging the status quo. We have a shared vision based on a why. You know, why are we doing social? Why do we want to be a human brand? Why do we want to do these things? Uh, you know, is there a compelling vision for that? The third thing, and this is really important, and it's probably the most important, again, back to deputizing and decentralizing and giving individual responsibility for social, is enabling and empowering and educating others to act. Having our team members go out and say, oh, go be social, isn't as effective as giving them the opportunity to, but also giving them some guidance. Social leaders need to model what the organization should do. And not every VP of marketing or CMO is going to be on social media. I get that. However, you see some of the most successful brands in social, and even if they are not actively engaged, they model and believe in the connectedness, they believe in a connected market, they believe in you know having human beings front and center. And they actually encourage their team members and motivate them through ways other than just, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna add a couple bucks to your paycheck for blogging. In all of the corporate blogging efforts and social media efforts we've seen, we've never seen monetary incentive be the reason that someone becomes the Uber Facebooker, blogger, tweeter, pinner, or whatever it is that they're doing. It is nothing to do with dollars. There are other factors of motivation at work here. Uh, and then finally, you know, challenge yourself with, are we really moving forward? Have we evolved? Have we innovated? Have we engaged? Are we moving forward? Or are we just copying others and keeping pace? And as Dilbert says, you know, keeping yourselves on the path to mediocrity. Uh, a couple things. Uh, again, the uh, slides and all that stuff are available. Uh, we'll give you that in a second. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I uh, didn't see any questions come through, so I assume that this is either uh, totally nonsensical or it made perfect sense, and I've explained everything in 45 minutes. Uh, again, marketingsfont.com slash resources. The slides will be up there within 24 hours, and the recording will be there as well. Continuing the conversation and deepening our perspective on human social, uh, we get very tactical next month, and we talk about developing personas. What do we do? How do we do it? What are the steps? What's, what are the outcomes? What should we expect through the process? And really guide you through that, uh, that whole concept, uh, which is going to be a blast because these are, uh, these are a lot of fun. Those of you that have done them know what I'm talking about. Those of you that haven't, you're in for a treat. Um, so thanks again, everyone. Uh, have a great, uh, great rest of the month, and we'll catch you all in March.